you can't discuss Bitcoin without politics. In like 10 years, everybody will be using Bitcoin and it will be widespread. Once someone got to study the traditional financial system, it's not too hard to understand why Bitcoin is a very, very important tool. We are living in a scam since 1971. It's a scam. There is nothing nice to say about it. You don't need to be a techie. You use the internet. Do you know how it works? Do you care? No. They ruin the education on purpose. Someone who sees Bitcoin as an investment still doesn't understand Bitcoin as a whole. Money has been always taboo. We don't talk about money. And I have goosebumps now as I'm talking, you know, because I saw his eyes and he was like, oh, mommy, whoa, whoa. He just felt it, you know, that this is something big. The pod- podcast was in Hungarian. And, um, you know, finding guests after three years, it was quite challenging. I started to do podcasts also in English, but with the Hungarian audience, it didn't go well. Obviously, we have language barriers, and although it was uh, subtitled, they don't really like it. So, yeah, I was just um, not motivated anymore, you know. So you did it every week for like yes. how long? Two years, t- three years? Or? Three years. Oh, that's a lot of episodes. Like that's 150 episodes, right? Exactly. Exactly. Even more. And uh, it was not just about Bitcoin, but also I made like off topics like uh, technology, uh, digitalization. Um, I also had a guest uh, like uh, a former uh, president of the uh, Central Bank of Hungary, so yeah, it was it was pretty good, but I will tell you on the on the record because we say everything and we're oh, not we gonna already, have uh, We're already recording, so let's 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 yeah, keep it going. Right. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, so. I usually do a like I usually do a, um, a, a nice start, but sometimes it flows into it, and then I just like keep recording, and, like and uh, then it's then it's like a it's a cold start, I would say. But Better yeah, like like, like like keep going. Yeah, yeah, and and he also was like a minister, the finance minister of Hungary. And uh, yeah, I was trying to get, you know, uh, a nice selection of people to go around the topic. And um, um, yeah, but, you know, after a while, it was really, really very hard to find new guests. So, yeah, I was just rather, I do some other things. And uh, but I still have, I don't know, desire to make one day a podcast. Uh, But for now, I'm crazy busy, so I have no time. And, you know, providing quality uh, requires time and energy. So I don't want to do something which is not like uh, perfect or or close to perfect or at least um, listenable (laughs) for the audience. Yeah, so... That's Absolutely. It. Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it, it's hard work. I, I do it full time, of course. I do it every day. Uh, and the guests are not, no problem because I do it English. So, uh, because there's so many Bitcoiners out there. But if, like, Hungary is not a huge, for those people, because I have mostly people in America, UK, Canada, mm-hmm. they might not know Hungary. Hungary is like a really small country, uh, like Austria in a similar size, I would say. Uh, so finding there enough guests to fill a Bitcoin podcast, which is a niche topic. It's not like, yeah, technology podcast you probably can fill, but a Bitcoin podcast is like a niche of a niche. Uh, so that's, that's a, that's a difficult task. Uh, uh, so that's, I think you have to go English at that point like you have to either do two podcasts where you have Hungarian once a month and maybe English like three or four or five times a month I don't know uh, or like just do it in English and I decided actually to do it only English because Mm -hmm. there are so many good German podcasts like I was like I don't need to fill a hole in the German market. I obviously don't feel I have to fill a hole in the English market because there are great exactly. uh, English podcasts also. But I want to speak every day with a Bitcoiner and I want to speak with Hungarian Bitcoiners. I want to speak with African Bitcoiners from, from America, from Canada, from everywhere and not just in the German small bubble because like the German speaking community 
is a bubble. It's they, yes. they all have uh, a similar worldview, uh, and they don't understand how an African Bitcoiner looks at Bitcoin. They don't exactly. understand how El Salvadorians, or maybe El Salvador a little bit more because we hear a lot from there. But yeah, it's that's why I want to do it English and international. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting. What did you learn from from doing so many Bitcoin podcasts? What was your like one of uh, a, a bigger learning that you had from all those podcasts? I don't even know where to start. <laughs> it was a lot, you know. Uh, first of all, I was very excited at, at first, you know, because I didn't have any experience. So first, when I started, we didn't even do with video, uh, just uh, just audio. And obviously, I needed some time to to get used to it, to be familiar with the technology, you know, with the platform I was using for recording and uh, the works afterwards. And obviously the people, because uh, it wasn't live. So I always, I always prepared in advance, like a week uh, advance. And obviously I was trying to organize it uh, like weeks ahead. But it was also very tricky because, you know, people have lives. So you need to um, pick up. And, um, and the people, uh, the, it, was, it was a huge selection of different uh, uh, people with different profiles. Obviously, it was a Bitcoin podcast. But as I mentioned earlier, I was trying to put in like off topics. And um, uh, there were um, uh, very, very interesting uh, discussions about, um, about basically economics, uh, technology, um, artificial intelligence, payment systems, uh, also politics. However, I was always trying to avoid politics, but this is a bad approach because you can't discuss Bitcoin without politics. And I think this was one of the biggest lessons, what I learned, because uh, the podcast was in collaboration with uh, Hungary's oldest um, online magazines called uh, Bitcoin Basis. And... Um, it was the podcast was under their roof uh, and also the magazine. And and I think all these kind of magazines are try to avoid politics. So I was the same. And once you go further down to the rabbit hole, it's necessary to realize that there is no Bitcoin without politics or else I can f put it differently like Bitcoin is above politics, in my view. So it was very, very interesting uh, to realize this, this kind of stuff. And, and I really learned a lot. I, I just mentioned uh, uh, the man who was, who was a, a former minister uh, of Hungary. And actually, I was asking him about um, the Austrian economics. And he was uh, very, very surprised. Like, what the hell I want with, <laughs> with Austrian economics? And obviously, he, re he realized what I wanted with it. And um, he had a great uh, answer to that. But, but this is also very interesting that um, what I realized, I'm a lawyer. So I attended the university. I learned economics, uh, micro, uh, micro, statics, st statistics, whatever. But I never, ever heard about um, anything else but the mainstream. So not even to, him, to develop um, uh, critical thinking uh, for the students, whatever uh, reason, there was all, only the mainstream um, knowledge, what I was taught. And actually, uh, 20 years passed after I finished university, and I feel like um, a little girl who is studying these topics never heard before, which is very nice because I love to learn new stuff. But in the other hand, disaster. It's, it's unacceptable, totally unacceptable that you don't learn things like this. Not because we all are um, revolutionaries who want to um, uh, ruin this uh, fantastic system we live in. I am, though. But not uh, all the others are like me. But we all need to know about these different perspectives, don't we? Otherwise, how we can understand the whole picture, I understand, though, why is it not uh, taught? I'm not uh, so naive. But, but still, this was a huge realization. And actually, this is what got me started um, 
in full force because I already started before I started the podcast uh, to, to, to learn about Bitcoin, to deal with Bitcoin. Uh, but this was uh, another um, point when I realized that I need to go full <laughs> into Bitcoin. Ah, really, really cool. Yeah. How is um, currently, I mean, Hungary, it's, it's, it's a small country, but still, uh, how is the politics there towards Bitcoin? Uh, and are politics even speaking about it? Or is it a non-topic? Or how is it treated there? To be honest, I don't live in Hungary. I left Hungary almost 15 years ago. I used to live in, uh, in the UK. And um, in the last 12 years, we've been living in Malta, middle of the Mediterranean Sea, best place ever. Um, however, for, I don't know now, for like four or five years, I, I am involved with the Hungarian Bitcoiners and with the scene. Uh, but let, let me jump back a little bit to have the full picture, how I got started, and then you will have a better understanding so it was like 2017, the end of 2017, when I accidentally got involved with, with Bitcoin. Uh, and let me just tell you a, 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 a private story about, about this. My husband, um, he's a hairdresser. And uh, none of the conferences can beat a hair salon for networking purposes, you know. And uh, he was always my Pimp, if I may say something like that, because he used to have a lot of clients, you know, and uh, they, they, they had always requests for a lawyer, for this, for, for, for things like that. And one day, there was this guy um, from Switzerland, uh, used to live here in Malta, half Hungarian, half Swiss. And he was a client of my husband's. And one day, um, he asked if he knew um, someone uh, a legal professional uh, to work, to, to, to be interested, to work um, in part-time, uh, also with the possibility to work from home, like in a hybrid uh, uh, situation, um, with a topic um, uh, released on a later stage. My husband said that, um, yes, I know a person and uh, she's my wife. And then things started to escalate. This was the time when our first um, uh, kid was born and I was at home, but, I, but it was, uh, he was almost already one year old. And I started to look around, you know, to go back to, to work. And uh, things started escalating. So I met this guy and uh, we had this interview with his business partner. It was a startup and the product was um, a, an application, uh, a payment application to pay with uh, Bitcoin and data. And as I said, it was the end of 2017, 2000, the beginning of 2018. Lightning Network was just uh, uh, at the very, very beginning uh, phase of it. And um, people didn't really know about that. So uh, this application was quite new. And I think we were uh, ahead of our time. The concept was that there was this closed loop with funds already in, so the Bitcoin payment went through in no time, just like Lightning Network. And um, obviously, it could be used for small purchases, like buying a coffee, the, the popular phrase, you know, who can buy a coffee with Bitcoin? So it was possible uh, through this application. And, uh, and actually, that was a time here in Malta when um, uh, Malta proclaimed itself as a blockchain island. And they had this uh, virtual financial act um, uh, in place. They, they were the first uh, globally to come up with a, with a crypto uh, regulation. So, so it was really hot here in Malta, you know, conferences after conferences, all the big names came to Malta. Um, and I was part of it. But to go back to these interviews with, with the owners of the of this startup, you know, they, they started to tell me what to do, what will be the job and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I didn't understand a single word. Although I had like financial background when I finished with the university in Hungary, I used to work for the Hungarian tax and uh, custom department. So I had a rough uh, imagination about finances and, th and things like that. 
But all the topics these guys were mentioning, Bitcoin, blockchain, uh, uh, payments, QR codes, whatever, I was like, okay. In the other hand, I'm quite uh, brave and confident most of the time. So I was like, whatever it is, let me try and then we'll see. So I started to work for the startup in the first, let's say, six months. I have no idea where I was. I have no idea what they were talking about. We were just three in the office. They rent this huge office, more than 100 square meter. We were sitting in there, three of us. Of course, the plan was to hire developers, you know, a cust uh, customer care to fill up the space. But things weren't uh, that simple. First of all, uh, I'm a lawyer. So I was looking for law, you know, like regulation, which was non-existent at the time. So I had to made up, basically, I was the jolly joker of the company, let's say. So, you know, startups, they don't employ uh, plenty of people. They don't have departments, things like that. So I was basically the only one with the owners who, who had to do everything and figure out basically the job on a daily basis. So I did it. Um, I went to all these conferences. I, 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 I read a lot. I, I studied. And this guy, uh, the founder, he was a visionary, like a typical man uh, who just, uh, I, and I have these pictures in my head and I think I will never forget uh, in my entire life that he was standing in front of the, the window, you know, like talking to uh, uh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to the end, and he was he was telling me um, um, he was a, he used to be a Swiss banker, so so he had many stories about um, the financial system and all these uh, controversies what he experienced, and and also the 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 idea why he uh, set up this company was that in 2015 there was a guy who approached him uh, back in Switzerland, and he wanted to buy a property for Bitcoin. And that was the time when his guy first heard about Bitcoin and he got this idea like, OK, what is Bitcoin? How can we pay with it? What is the status? Blah, blah, blah. And obviously he didn't find too much. So that's why he set up this company and he told me all these stories about Bitcoin. And he was like, uh, uh, write this down, what I'm saying in like five, ten years, everybody will be using Bitcoin and it will be widespread and everybody will be knowing about it and blah, blah, blah. And first I was like, OK, so I started to study it and, and I believed every word what he said because I put the picture together and it was very easy after the six months, what I told you when it wasn't easy. But after it got very, very easy to understand what he was saying. And I still believe until today that once someone uh, got to study, got the effort actually to study uh, the traditional financial system, it's not too hard to understand why Bitcoin is a very, very important tool. But this is a very uh, important and unmissable step to deal with the traditional financial system. And back to the story, let me finish, and then uh, I will let some, uh, some other stuff. So, so this guy was, 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 was very enthusiastic, and, uh, and he was on a mission. Uh, so did I. Uh, uh, I, I, I really, I fairly quickly understood what is going on, that we are living in a scam, basically, since 1971. It's a, it's, it's a scam. There is nothing uh, nice to say about it. And I mean the financial system. Um, so I started to, to get involved uh, more and more. And this company, unfortunately, failed when, when COVID came and, um, and things got... Uh, quite vague, and I'm referring to Malta, because they started like, oh, everybody's welcome, you know, and now we will, uh, uh, we have the paradise here, um, Bitcoin and and um, the other cryptocurrencies, they said it will be uh, legal tender and uh, blah, blah, blah. 
But obviously never happened. And um, with the act I mentioned earlier, now I may say that it was um, like a pre-MICA regulation. Uh, it was very tough, very, very layered, but it was not for startups. That was for sure. So most of the companies just escaped Malta. Uh, their desire wasn't fulfilled with this uh, act. So basically the blockchain island uh, sunk. So so did the company, unfortunately, but it was a, a bad effect of COVID and some other stuff. And and basically, I was left without uh, any work. Plus, I discovered that I am pregnant and there was COVID and uh, we were left uh, home, you know, uh, wasn't allowed to go out. And I was like, okay, now let's figure figure out <laughs> what to do. But by the time I developed already this passion about Bitcoin, so I said, okay, let me start uh, to create my own website. Uh, I had no idea how to do it, but I had the time of my life, so I, I, I learned uh, how to do like a basic WordPress uh, website, and I started to write articles about Bitcoin, about um, uh, technology, digitalization, as I said, and um, against the system. Uh, it was in Hungarian, uh, also I wrote a couple of uh, articles in English, but but mostly in Hungarian. And after like one or two months, uh, it was a huge surprise. I got a lot of invitations uh, to write, to get to know me a little bit better. So I got this permanent uh, blog in one of ta- one of Hungary's uh, um, oldest um, financial daily financial magazines. I, I still have it uh, until today. Plus, I got. Uh, um, this invitation from Bitcoin Basis, who I mentioned earlier, this uh, uh, oldest Hungarian uh, Bitcoin uh, magazine, uh, and I started to write for them articles. And then after a couple of months, I was asked to do the, the, the podcast. And also, uh, as I said, I, I am a legal professional. I also got some invitations for cooperation. So in a very, very, very fast um, uh, time I think it was like four months and I find myself uh, in the middle of uh, a very very hectic life with a lot of job so I, I, I started my own business I'm a freelance legal uh, professional only advising clients uh, in the in the crypto space but more like uh, in Bitcoin um, we started to translate because I realized and, and uh, basically uh, that was the starting point of my business that when the startup closed and I made my statistics and um, like, a, like a close down, my own close down, I realized that by the time the company has shut down, we had roughly 4,000 users. And out of, out of these 4,000 users, there were only like two, three hundred of Women and uh, and I was like no no way no way, but I had this uh, um, feeling that the reason must be the lack of education, because by the time there there weren't as much books and uh, uh, resources as we have nowadays, but mostly uh, in Hungarian we didn't have anything only this magazine not only focusing mostly on Bitcoin, but not only focusing on Bitcoin. Uh, And there was a huge need uh, for it. So we started to translate books into Hungarian. The first uh, book we translated was uh, Knut Swanholm's Sovereignty and uh, Independence. Uh, This is already available in Hungarian. Um, then with, with the networking and with the podcast, I got to know plenty of people, some other guys who translated already the Bitcoin standard, the fiat standard, the little Bitcoin book. So there were these guys uh, uh, growing out of nowhere. <laughs> Obviously, they were existing, but uh, we started to uh, talk to each other. Um, now I'm in the discussion. Actually, this week we will finalize uh, and I will have the copyright 
uh, rights for um, Alex Gladstein's uh, hidden repression about the IMF and the World Bank. Um, and slowly, so, slowly, I realized that this is my mission, to educate, to spread the word, but in Hungarian. I never wanted to work for the Hungarian market. I left Hungary 15 years ago. Uh, and back to your question. Sorry, it was quite a long answer. <laughs> but, but, but back to your question. Politics. No mention uh, officially about Bitcoin in Hungary. Um, but there are huge um, improvements. As uh, also in Hungary, the 21 group formed like one year, roughly a year ago. Three weeks ago, we organized because one of the fellow Bitcoiners, he has a hotel. So that was the perfect venue for such um, event. And um, we organized the first Bitcoin only conference in Hungary, in Miskolc. This is the name of the town. And it, and it was a plus to organize it in Miskolc because, you know, as you also said, Hungary is a small country. Everything happens in the capital, in Budapest. But we did it on purpose. Oh, first of all, the, the hotel is uh, in Miskolc, so we couldn't move it. <laughs> and secondly, it was on purpose not to do in, in in Budapest, because we were curious how many people we can attract with this kind of things. And it was a huge surprise, a very, very nice event. Uh, for three days, every day, the conference room was packed with people, more than 150 attendees uh, daily. It was a really high quality uh, conference. I used to go for conferences. So I know the standard. I know how is a proper Bitcoin conference. My, my, my favorite is Honey Badger in Riga. I attended it a couple of times, but um, uh, this spring, we went all together with the guys from the 21 uh, Hungarian group to Madeira, to the Bitcoin Atlantis, and it was amazing. So we were trying to, to organize a similar event, and I think we did it. Uh, and there will be the second one next spring. Huge demand. People are very interested. So it was really, really we, were, we were so happy to experience uh, a wonderful event like this. And I was one of the hosts of the event. And uh, I also had the chance to talk to the people. Uh, obviously, I want to talk to women. And this is another very interesting thing because uh, every time I um, talk about Bitcoin to, to people who don't uh, know me, they have this preconception, you know, like, oh, you must be very techy. You must be understanding coding. Um, you must be a geek or something like that. And I always explain that, listen, guys, I have no idea. Obviously, I have a bit, but like a layman, uh, you don't need to be a techie. You don't need to understand. You use the Internet. You use apps like Viber or uh, WhatsApp or whatever you use. Do you know how it works? Do you care? No, the answer is always no. So then, why, why would you understand how Bitcoin works? Obviously, you need to know a couple of things about it, but not uh, into the deep forest <laughs> where you get lost for sure, slowly, slowly. And if you develop your interest, why not? But for the beginning, uh, to understand Bitcoin, you don't need to be a techie. And that's why Bitcoin is wonderful and is a miracle for me because every people can take their understanding of Bitcoin. So again, back to politics. Now as uh, Maika is getting into effect also in Hungary very soon, um, yes, I have the impression that uh, the authorities started to um, deal with it, not particularly with Bitcoin, but with cryptocurrencies and um, regulation wise. But um, I don't think that they are prepared for it. Obviously, we will see. I have a couple of clients who, are, um, um, who want to get the licenses, the proper licenses, as they are working for a couple of years now and uh, they, um, they want to obey the law. So they go for the license. 
and um, this is something I don't I still don't know what is going to happen because this is just the beginning uh, very very early but I'm not I don't think that authorities are are ready for it I don't think that uh, they studied uh, properly the topic I'm curious to see what is going to happen um, but I'm already pissed if I may say so <laughs> because, because um, I saw that the Hungarian uh, national um, the central bank was recruiting for a couple of months to get the right uh, people to the right positions I don't know how they managed it but I don't like the idea that people who are not in the industry for certain years are supervising uh, um, a, 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 a business which they don't have um, enough um, knowledge to supervise. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. And Coin Vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing Genesis edition of their watch collections. You have the date of the first ever mined Bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in. I love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions. I love those watches so so much. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis I guess you already bought some Bitcoin and now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss Robin to get your Bitbox. And the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual. You have to have the most secure self-custody setup. You have to secure your own devices. You have to protect your privacy. You have to set up an inheritance plan. And depending on where you live, you even want to have a plan B, a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really, really wrong. And through all those steps, the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, the, they kind of have the incentive to, to hire the wrong people. <laughs> Like they, they don't, the, the, the central banks probably don't even want to hire the people that know about uh, Bitcoin and crypto. <laughs> I don't know, but I also think that people who who are in the business, they don't want to go to work for them either. Also, so, yeah. it would be so, interesting as a, a Bitcoiner, like, oh, I want to work in the central bank just to blow it up. I know a guy who wanted to do that, but he wasn't recruited. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. cool. Interesting. Uh, by the way, this hotel, I think um, uh, it's from Fer Ferenc Kovac. Yes, uh, he, he, he was also on the podcast. Uh, so oh, if, if people oh, want to check him out. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I talked with him uh, in Prague also, uh, at the Bitcoin Prague uh, conference, uh, where he, he also told me, I think they, they were right there in the plans of accepting Bitcoin in the hotels or already did it, or like some, somewhere around that timeline. Uh, so it's, so it's also, it wasn't also interesting for the, with him to discuss if people want to, uh, check it out and, and see that, uh, that hotel. Bitcoin story from, from his side. Exactly. Uh, re really interesting. Uh, and you, you also work as a lawyer in Bitcoin right now. So mm -hmm. with like the Mika uh, regulations and, and stuff like that, if I understood that right. Okay. Well, so, so you're working then with exchanges or like with, 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 with who do you work uh, in, in Bitcoin with, as a lawyer? Yeah, 
I, I work for for exchanges, wallet service providers, uh, and there are some some guys who are just at the beginning of their journey, want to build something. Um, and yeah, uh, these are like permanent uh, works for for years, and and I always have like ad hoc works from people um, just to advise them uh, about the approach. And um, I also did um, the proofreading of the Binance website. They, they translated it into Hungarian. So, yeah, I was one of the proofreaders. And yes, as I said now, uh, uh, this huge job is ahead of me to do the translation of the book. Uh, and also, but this is... Uh, very starting phase, um, I want to do something in Hungary, like uh, education-wise. Um, now we are um, at the start of uh, putting out an application in one of the universities in my hometown um, um, for designers to create something about Bitcoin. This is just to for the Bitcoin adoption, to raise awareness you know that there is this thing called Bitcoin. <laughs> you can start to do something with it. And I have very good connections uh, back in my university. So we are now uh, in the middle of um, uh, starting to organize a week for financial awareness, where we can spread the word about Bitcoin. And um, there are also kids' books about Bitcoin. I'm sure you also know a couple. Uh, 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 in particular, there is an Austrian girl, no? And she... Uh, an Austrian uh, Bitcoin book? Or like... For kids. Hmm? I, I don't know, uh, but... Maybe it's German, 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 I'm not sure. sure. But it, it could, could be, could be, yeah. Austrian Bitcoin kids book. Anyway. Oh, uh, my friend uh, called Bitcoin. Not or, that one. Or, or Mala's Bitcoin Adventures. Mm, Marla's Bitcoin Adventure also heard. Maybe, yeah, maybe that one. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we have these books. I, I don't know the title because I just bought it. I sent it to Hungary. And my uh, my colleague, she, she checked it and she said it's a very, very, very good book. And uh, we want to donate, donate it uh, to little children, to schools, to, to start to educate uh, themselves about Bitcoin. We also organize several meetups uh, in Hungary. So, yeah, things are getting uh, more interesting as we realize that there are these people in the bubble. And basically, I, I am too in my own bubble and we have to connect to each other because for a couple of years, I believe that I don't need to connect to anyone. I just do my own stuff. I don't care. It's just, you know, step by step, uh, one by one, and I will achieve something. But you can't do it like that. You need to see the future. What do you want to achieve? And then to build up. Uh, and luckily or accidentally, I found the right people. The, the right people found me. So now we are forming this kind of um, group where we, where we are on a mission, just like you with your podcast. We are also on a mission to, to educate, and really there is this huge barrier uh, of, uh, of the language. And uh, in my view, this is also a political question. And back to your question once again, uh, I'm sure you don't follow the Hungarian politics, but for example, education, they ruined the education on purpose. Uh, in my time, when I used to go to primary school, but obviously, this is in relation to uh, uh, communism. As you may know, Hungary was under communism, communism uh, for more than 40 years. So when I was in school, we, uh, we were allowed to learn either Russian or German. And I used to learn. Uh, I was always learning German. For more than 12 years, I was learning German. Half of my family is from Germany. My surname is German. So it was obvious that I was going to learn German. I, 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 I can't say a single word. Obviously, I can, but I totally forgot it. 
if if I would go to Germany or Austria for a couple of weeks, I'm sure it would come back. But now it's like a sleeping knowledge, very, very uh, somewhere at the back of my mind. Anyway, and I also st- uh, learned um, Russian for uh, four years. A couple of words I can read, I could write, but I never learned English. And nowadays it's even worse. Because, for example, when I got my university degree, it was compulsory to have at least one language exam, like middle, um, um, I don't know how it's called, like a, um, like a middle, I don't know, level of language exam. It's not mandatory anymore. You don't need to study languages. Uh, they prefer to to uh, educate people in Hungarian. You you don't have access, obviously, because of this, this uh, language barrier, to read the news, to read books. Better to read books than the news. To read books, to watch documentaries or whatever, and not only Bitcoin, but whatever topic you are interested in. Nowadays, it's, it's, it's very, very hard to to get these kind of uh, resources because there is nothing available in Hungarian who would translate this kind of stuff in Hungarian no one so but the government they I'm sure they do this on purpose to go to to, to grow up these ships uh, for good workers you know not to think it's easier to manipulate uh, people like that so so that's why uh, this is a very very serious mission for me um to to provide these kind of resources in Hungarian because people ha- have to know they have to know about it so so yes so the english uh level in hungary is is, is not as good so the people don't even, uh, can really understand uh outside of uh yeah <laughs> outside of hungarian language that's interesting and because it, really. It, that really does something like if if you only have your own language and your own language is not english uh that then you usually are in in a in a way smaller bubble i mean there are there's mandarin <laughs> like hindi there's like uh other languages that are huge uh but especially for like hungary where there's only like a, a small part of it that's a that's a huge problem and and i, I can only encourage anybody who, who who lives in in a country like hungary uh like get as fluent as possible uh as possible in english uh not only to like get knowledge but also to like spread knowledge uh, i think that's really important uh and also um a, a question that i never really asked on the podcast because you are only my second lawyer even though i had o- o- over 300 <laughs> podcast guests already on from a legal standpoint just being a bitcoiner is there anything someone should be aware of is there anything that can ha- bad happen if we should post <laughs> on social media uh, around uh, buy Bitcoin, otherwise you will be poor, something like that. Like, is, is there anything that you like, hey, <laughs> Bitcoiners, <laughs> please be aware that could be, obviously everyone is in a different part of the world and different jurisdictions, uh, but is there anything that uh, you can share? I would encourage everyone to do their posts because yes, when I started, uh as i said in 1718 we couldn't put ads on the internet because it it wasn't allowed all all these um, uh, agencies were asking for license numbers and uh, and things like that but obviously no one had a license number because license was non-existent and i was trying uh, hours with the indian uh, customer cares uh, guys poor guys uh, to explain that, listen, this is the situation. We don't have, and these were from, from Google, the guys. Uh, but then we just gave up, you know, it was impossible to do anything. And then we, we did it on purpose, obviously everywhere, like a, like a sabotage to write everywhere and, uh, and, um, and post as much as we can, buy Bitcoin, and, you know, all the slogans. Nowadays, although uh, it is legal, now we have the license numbers, but um, uh, mysteriously, uh, quite frequently, I see these kind of posts. Could be fake news too, 
I never verify them. It's not so important. But last week, for example, I saw a guy who created, um, what was it? Created uh, like a brochure about Bitcoin and nothing, no financial advice or things like that was included. Uh, just an educational um, uh, leaflet about Bitcoin. And he created it with Canva. And then he got the, oh, I think I saw it on Nostr. And it was deleted by Canva. And I just saw the screenshot that it was, uh, it was just uh, banned. So, and it's crazy for me that nowadays something like this can happen when Bitcoin is a legal tender in a couple of countries in this world. And this is just pure stupidity for me and re reflects back to the owner of Canva, if I can intimidate someone, I don't want to, but come on, educate yourself, folks, please read, because this is pure stupidity. And I only can hope that in a couple of years, these people will realize how stupid they were not to uh, educate themselves about the topic. So I, I don't have any advice not to be brave and do do uh, whatever you feel like to do because there is no law that can prevent you to do this. I love that. Uh, that's the that's the answer I was uh, looking for <laughs> because I <laughs> because I, I I'm doing exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that you said in the beginning that was re really interesting also, uh, because you said that when you speak about, oh, I'm into Bitcoin, then people come to you and say like, oh, you have to be technical, like this, those things, which obviously is not true. You, do, you, you can understand Bitcoin on a fundamental level without being able to code Bitcoin, like um, most people use the internet, uh, as you also brought up in the example. Um, what, what, but what are some really important things that, that you thought that, that people really should know when they, they, they get into Bitcoin? Like, what are the, the things that we, we definitely should teach uh, about Bitcoin uh, outside of the technical fl things? Obviously, it's, it's limited and stuff like that. But what is the, like, what is the core message for you uh, in, in Bitcoin? Freedom. For me, Bitcoin never was an investment. And I never start like that. And I also think that someone who sees Bitcoin as an investment um, still doesn't understand Bitcoin as a whole. It can be an investment too. And I would be stupid not to see the level of wealth Bitcoin can create. Obvious. This is obvious. But what I want other people understand is more like the monetary system what Bitcoin has and what I also told to you that without understanding the current financial system no one will understand Bitcoin and no one will understand why we need Bitcoin so my most important uh, task is to make people sit down and read those economics books to understand what we are living in. And I'm sure that people are intelligent enough to understand once they understand the living standard. So books like the Bitcoin standard and the fiat standard compulsory for everyone for everyone to understand. And also last time I watched your, your, uh, your episode with Rachel and, and she uh, said something which I resonate very much because he said that thanks for men, for the wonderful men who are very good problem solvers and they created, uh, he, she said that he believes that um, uh, Satoshi uh, on his own, he created Bitcoin and he's a, a, a very good example of this wonderful uh, man who, who was working hard and, uh, and uh, discovered this digital um, uh, scarcity and, uh, and everything what, what Bitcoin is. But now is, it is our time for women because we have different kind of skills. We are more emotional. 
we are more okay i rather don't go into it why we are different with men because it's obvious but this is our huge task now to put things in different perspective and this is my perspective to to make people understand life on a on a on a financial fundament for now let's say so just to understand the system and if they do that they're going to have plenty of questions i'm sure and you will find the answers if you start to uh, uh, study bitcoin not all the questions will be answered but plenty of questions can be answered for these uh, questions with bitcoin so yeah and learn read 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 there's so many good books so many my peel was knut's book and that why, that's why I was uh, the first one what we translated because for me knut's van horn's book uh, the sovereignty and independence and i i don't know if you have ever read it if you don't please read it it's a wonderful uh, uh, masterpiece and it's not from the technical aspect of bitcoin it's more like the society the people obviously finance uh, finances uh, but how governments how the society works uh, what is the approach of money uh, what for we use the money what is uh, uh, the whole idea of money and these are so basic questions but i'm not sure that if i would just ask a random person on the street would answer could could answer it because they never think about these kind of questions and also uh, what is also a, 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 an interesting thing for me that money has been always uh, taboo we don't talk about money when i was a child i remember that the adults around me when they were started um, to talk about money they were always started their voice down you know because it's like a secret we don't talk about money come on why why we don't talk about money and i all and i also remember that oh it's not it's not for children you don't need to know about that children why why would they uh, deal with money and i have two young boys the three years old already knows about bitcoin obviously doesn't understand but he knows about bitcoin i can't talk to him about bitcoin obviously in his language i'm i'm, I'm not into starting bitcoin mining to him but obviously on his level the older one he's eight and he's he was with us on in in madeira he was watching michael saylor talking he didn't understand a single word but he experienced the vibe the people and i have goosebumps now as i'm talking you know because i saw his eyes and he was like oh mommy what what he he just he just felt it you know that this is something big and this is my task for my children for the people around me for for the women for the mothers for my colleagues to spread the word and one by one they will get killed all of them if it's in my hand they will <laughs> i'm quite <laughs> successful in this so <laughs> it, it sounds What's... like a threat <laughs> it is what i do lately is like um i tell every i ask first do you have blink wallet because one of one of our fellow bitcoiner he's he's um he's a developer of the company hungarian guy so we we all have the blink wallet and i and i ask them do you have blink wallet do you know what is blink wallet i don't even mention bitcoin no no blink wallet what is it i make them download once they download it i send send them some bitcoin like 10 20 30 depends on you know <laughs> how much they deserve it <laughs> 10 send, 20 30 uh, euros, euros not bit euros, yeah no, exactly. not bitcoin <laughs> no <laughs> and uh, and then i just wait you know and uh, and most of them are calling me back oh you send me and then you know the 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 price will start to move obviously when it's down no one calls me but when it goes up oh oh you send me that much of money i didn't know i said no i didn't send that much of money i'm sorry so then we can start to talk about bitcoin actually and 
they 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 got interested, you know. So after I tend to s- uh, send books, uh, articles. Uh, it's an abuse, though. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Obviously, if someone doesn't want, I don't do it. I'm not crazy, totally. But uh, but yeah, my friends are almost all in between. Now. It's it, it's it's hard because um, like obviously as Bitcoiners we know um what direction we are going what direction the field system is going and what direction bitcoin is going and when then you see a person that you love uh that doesn't get bitcoin and doesn't want to get bitcoin uh and they're all in uh fiat like you you have a really huge incentive to push it down the throat <laughs> exactly uh, ca- caringly lovingly but <laughs> but but uh True. you 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 do it out of love and not because you want to put them on on the same side as you are but because you know at some point they really will need it so i think it's um it's something good like orange pilling is something good but we also have to be careful to not uh shock people <laughs> like they, they they should come on on a, a little bit on their own terms at least that's what my uh i mean i talk so much about bitcoin that's everywhere where i go um even in families like usually bitcoin comes up just because i'm in the room no, i'm not even talking about it so uh that's that's an advantage of being so vocal about bitcoin uh on social media with friends and stuff like that that it just It comes up. I was on a, uh, I'm now in Vienna. And I was back in Linz in another city in Austria and I met a lot of old friends there. <laughs> and, uh, it was, it was so funny. The, the, <laughs> when I came uh, after a while, people started to talk here about Bitcoin and there about Bitcoin because first I talked there about Bitcoin with them and then here and like the whole table all of the sudden talked about Bitcoin. And I was like, I, I did not start any of the talks, but they asked me about it. So like, I think we we have to be those those orange digital soldiers, uh, digital soldiers, orange um, Bitcoin soldiers, uh, and just like be there if if they have questions, and kind of just like put put Bitcoin in their lives, like <laughs> like just so they have an association to it. And if they are interested, they will call you, they will text you, uh, and giving them some Bitcoin is really cool because then they experience that and that it's actually easy. It's exactly. it's not like oh how I do I even do it? No, that's then the the question is out of the way. You just like have an app. Oh, there's Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin. It's super easy. I just got it. It took exactly. me two minutes to download the app. It took me one minute to get money. It's super easy. It is way easier than a bank account. That's also something that I heard is like, oh, my bank account, it was opened after a week. Bitcoin I got after three And minutes on a Sunday lucky. evening. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so that, that's, that's, I think that's, um, orange pilling, I think, will get easier and easier as the fiat system gets worse and worse. <laughs> That's it. I, w- I used to be more violent, though, years back, uh, <laughs> aggressively pilling. Obviously, I learned the lesson when no one wanted to talk to me anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, there must be something wrong. But nowadays, as I said, if I'm there, Bitcoin will come up. Just to mention that, oh, you are in Bitcoin, yes, whatever. Doesn't matter how they mention it, but then the discussion can be started if they want. I don't force it anymore. But people know where I am, where I'm found, so they can just contact and uh, we can talk. That's it. And I think this is my task for now. I'm part of the silent revolution, and by now I'm trying to be as silent as I can. Because now is the time for for silence, you know, because I seeded, uh, I put my seeds in the soil. And now I'm just waiting for them to grow and harvest. <laughs> ah, that's, that's great. Really cool. Um, uh, at the end of the podcast, I usually have like one question that is for every guest and one question that comes from the previous guest. But today, those two questions are... Not the same, but very similar. So I will condense it down to one question uh, and not ask you almost the same question twice. Um, the the question is, what is the biggest life lesson you ever learned besides Bitcoin? So something that you can share with the audience that has nothing to do with, the, to do with Bitcoin. Hmm. 
Very good question. So what is the biggest lesson I learned through Bitcoin, but not about Bitcoin? It doesn't have to be from Bitcoin. Like it's just like, just like something you learn from life. Ooh, I think simplicity. Simplicity is one of, one of the biggest lessons I learned and um, relates also to Bitcoin, relates to those things, what I said. Uh, obviously, this comes from my personality because I, I, I always, when I start something, I always see this huge task to fulfill. And the, the same happened to me with Bitcoin. But as I said at the beginning or in the middle, you don't need to see Bitcoin as something very uh, difficult and very uh, complex. And this is also true for life. I'm 45, so I have a bit of experience. And, and everything has to be very simple. And I experienced everything very simple, you know. And, and basically, this is the thing with, with Bitcoin. And that's why I said freedom and simplicity. Because if you don't make it, if you don't listen to the word, the outside word we live in nowadays, everything is so complicated. Uh, everything is so um, uh, uh, layered. And, and it seems that you only need to uh, just to go to work. Take your uh, credits, get your home, get your car, and die. Obviously, pay everything back and die. And with Bitcoin, something else opened up for me, which is very, very simple, a very simple life. And that's why I encourage everyone to learn about Bitcoin, to experience the simple beauty of life. That's beautiful. I love that a lot. I think simplicity is uh, something that I kind of have to do with the podcast because I do so many of them. <laughs> I have to keep the processes simple. <laughs> uh, perfect. And yeah, thank you so much. Before I let you go, uh, where can people find you, DM you, uh, read more about you? Uh, actually, everything is in Hungarian, so I wouldn't uh, suggest <laughs> because most of my stuff is in Hungarian for now. So... So yeah, but at, uh, at Bitcoin Basis and, uh, and also uh, at 21 Group. Um, and now the book is coming, but it will be also in Hungarian. So, and I don't really want to uh, also to expose myself. As I said, I'm just one of the Bitcoin plebs. I'm just doing my, my job, you know. I, it's my duty. I just wanted to search how many Hungarian listeners I have. And I will search that. Interesting. Interesting. But uh, YouTube doesn't give me Hungary. Maybe it's so less they don't even show it to me. <laughs> no metrics. No, wait, uh, Taiwan. No, it's not in the in the first top fifty countries. So uh, this is, this is uh, what I'm talking about. I still have plenty of job to do. <laughs> you you definitely have a, a plenty of, of of job to do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's fascinating. It's actually not on the, in the top uh, 15, then YouTube doesn't show it. Uh, I would have to export the, the Excel file now to, to see the, the top 500. And there is probably all, all of them in there because there are 500 countries. Probably let's shout out to the, to the five people that watch from Hungary right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Then thank you so much, uh, Kata, for, for being on. Thank you so much for taking the time. Also, thank you so much and for everyone that is uh, watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>